Welcome back to Win Games, Strategies for Success. Today we're looking at Proving Grounds. I'm going to assume you know how to play, and I'm just going to show you how to execute the strategy here. If you'd like to see the logic behind it or the probabilities, feel free to watch the long version of the video. The first step is to look at your enemies and determine where you can safely take a single. That is a single without a wound. This enemy goes down twice if it takes a single, so that's not safe, nor is two. But I can safely take a single on enemy three, enemy four, and enemy six. So you use that statement then, and as you roll, you're rolling until you have one single, and it's on enemy three, four, or six. So I say single on three, four, or six. Single on three, four, or six. As you choose which set to roll, you always want to choose, after checking to see if you have one single on three, four, or six, the largest set. So the largest set in this case being the fives, Single on three, four, or six, and look at that, we have it. The single on four is a safe single, so we stop regardless of how the other sets work. Then we take a look. Insufficient set on one. Insufficient set on two. On three, we got a hit. And on four, we take a hit. Conveniently, however, we recover an additional die off the exhaustion track, and then we can revise our statement. Our statement now is that we can safely take a single on three or six. So, single on three or six, and we're back in the arena. Single on three or six. Reroll your larger sets. Single on three or six. Having ties, I'll choose the three because I can take a single on three. So, single on three or six really becomes re-roll three or six when there's a debate between two sets of equal size. But I'm always choosing the largest set when there's no conflict. Single on, there it is, I have a single on three, so I'm done. End the round, assess, here, four ones is enough to get me a hit. Nothing on two, I take the hit on three. On four, I have an insufficient set. On six, I have an insufficient set, but pulled another die off the exhaustion track. Statement becomes single on, I can now safely take a single on one, three, or six. And we go back to the arena. Single on one, three, or six. Single on one, three, or six. First check that you're not there. We're definitely not there. I'm going to reroll the ones between the one and the fives because a one is a place where I can take a safe single. Single on one, three, or six. Now, here's an interesting scenario. I'm not there yet, but I would like to grab the fives. They're the larger set. That's my current rule, even though the safe single is on one, three, or six, and I have a set on six. I would advise in the training game, just stick with that, always give precedent to the larger rule. If you really want every bit of advantage based on probability that you can get, and you're trying to figure out, should I re-roll the sets where I have a safe single, or should I re-roll the larger sets, once you've mastered this and have a few free Bane cells, here's when the break occurs. Always re-roll the larger set if there are multiple singles. If you're in a situation where there was just one single, but you were still rolling because it was not a safe single, then you want to re-roll your sets that are safe. But in this case, multiple singles, and because we're just doing the training game, we'll stick with that larger set. It would look like this. We would then find ourselves in a situation where there were fewer than one single. So we would stop. That would get our last die off the exhaustion track after we checked and see whether we got hits anywhere or not. And at that point, you're pretty well home free. You have 11 dice. Keep re-rolling and don't stop until you have a safe single. If you want to add the modules to this, we can take a look at how that would occur. Uh, these two, Inspiration Powers and Draggling Die, make it easier. Just re-roll until it's not on Chaos and then leave it, whether it matches anything or not. Those will make your world easier. Uh, the Conspirators don't really do anything that you can strategize about. You, they just sort of happen and they do make it harder. But on these two, they're gonna affect your statement. So when you say, where can I take a safe single if every single is moving that battle marker down an extra space or if one set has to become a single, that's gonna affect when you stop. So just factor those in when you make your statement. This is no longer a safe single if it has to move down twice. For the chariots, anything that involves moving a battle marker down, you're gonna to need to take care of. Anything that simply references the exhaustion track, you'll leave it alone. So. 
I like having something on the exhaustion track in a chariot situation because it stops me from having to draw a second chariot card, which is gonna eat up that die anyway in all likelihood. With the exhaustion track pieces, you do wanna keep an eye on them because if you ever have a roll that would be a good roll if it just wasn't for that single five and you have a way to get rid of the five, go for it. Anything that's gonna move a battle marker down needs to be taken care of, singles immediately. As soon as you roll a five, put it on there. The sets leave till the end. Once you have a situation that's safe, with regard to your singles and wounds, then pull one of those pairs, preferably one that's an insufficient set out, put it on that chariot, and that'll take care of that piece and keep your dice in play as long as possible. The shields are the module that's going to make things the most interesting. And it turns out they're actually very helpful. This strategy produces quite a few insufficient sets. But all that really does is change your statement. When you're rolling now, your statement becomes singles on six and four because they have shields and must have a single. And then if there's anywhere else where you could take a single, let's say it looks something like this, you might say, or three. So singles on six, four for sure, because I'm gonna take hits if I don't do that. And then you say, possibly three. And what this does when you're rolling, singles on six, four, possibly three, is it tells you you must re-roll your sixes and fours. Sixes and fours are no longer, is it the larger, is it not the larger? You have to re-roll those, you re-roll those first. And it actually helps you because it moves those numbers onto other sets. So if I have to have a single on six and four, and I could take a single on three, I need to keep rolling in this situation. Single on, I re-roll the four even though it's not the largest because I can't have a single there. Single on six, four, maybe three. And now we're in a situation where we're winning. We have a single, oh, nope. We have a single on six and four. And getting to re-roll those, what produces larger sets elsewhere. So that's how you're gonna hand your, your shields. They're gonna fluctuate probably between two to four shields. You'll always have a safe place to put a single and you'll always get to re-roll those sets and stack them into other sets. The last one is the sun and moon. This module introduces an additional decision point. So. You'll always want to face the moon, don't worry about the sun, face the moon towards the enemy that will offer you the most safe singles. So in a situation like this, for example, I would face the moon here because if I assign a single to enemy four, it's going to go down one and then an additional one for not getting hit on the moon enemy, but I won't take a wound. So if I assign the moon here, then I have safe singles on two, three, four, and six. It gives me an additional safe single. If you can't put a safe single anywhere, put it on the enemy where you're most likely to be able to move that enemy up, and then you can show some preference towards that set if you want to, but it won't happen often enough for it to be a problem. And again, we can take a wound or two, we just can't take four. That's how you're gonna apply these strategies. I have found everything is beatable if you have shields involved. The one set of modules that I would love to see a full playthrough and victory on would be Sun and Moon, Chariots, and Conspirators. They just pull so many dice, it's really hard to get. But show me what you got. Thanks for watching.